Trump's Apple threat is his latest attempt to reshape the global tech supply chain. But could the push for American manufacturing derail big tech's broader shift into physical AI? Our Deirdre Bosa is watching that in today's Tech Check. Good morning, Dee. Hey, good morning, Carl. Yeah, so the president's pressure on Apple, that could be the first real stress test of whether America is ready to manufacture the future of artificial intelligence. This is critical as the race moves from software to hardware. Smartphones are still the gateway device, but everyone from Meta to Google to OpenAI, Tesla, they're building new form factors designed to embed AI more deeply into the physical world. There's smart glasses, humanoid robots, robotaxis, even the next iPhone are becoming AI native devices. And so that means that the next competitive frontier it's not just model quality or compute infrastructure, it's manufacturing capacity. And Apple may be the first to find out what happens when Washington demands fabrication. This week, Sam Altman and Johnny Ive, we talked about it a lot, they laid out a vision to ship 100 million AI companions that will move consumers beyond screens. Slated to begin production in 2027 and likely assembled in Vietnam to avoid that China risk, according to top Apple and supply chain analyst Ming-Chi Kuo. But if Trump is not satisfied with iPhones made in Vietnam or India, why would he be any more forgiving of OpenAI's next-gen device built anywhere but America? You got Meta and Google. They may be in the same boat with their next-gen AI devices as well. They're smart glasses. They're still manufactured in Asia, small volume for now, but both are expected to scale as AI becomes, again, more wearable, more contextual, more physical. Then there's embedded AI, humanoid robots, which Morgan Stanley calls a $5 trillion opportunity, and robotaxis. If Trump forces onshoring too soon, America risks falling behind China in these critical races. Waymo's already trying to get ahead of politics, announcing a new AV factory in Arizona this month and playing up U.S. assembly, even as its next-gen fleet will rely on Chinese-made Zeker platforms. This is a move straight out of Apple's playbook, but one that now we know just hasn't been enough this time around. Trump is demanding full fabrication, not just footprint. And guys, if Apple can't meet that bar, mm. who in big tech can? Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Is anybody building tech hardware in the United I mean, Look, Tesla, if Tesla can build Teslas in the United States, why can't Apple and OpenAI build wearable devices here? It's a good point, but you look to the Apple example, and yes, they have a long history, right, of their supply chain being in Asia. They're not moving to the U.S. They're moving to India for a reason. And as, you know, Steve Kovac has been talking about this morning, it's actually just cheaper for them to eat the tariff for the tax than it is to move on manufacturing here. I think that Google example is really interesting because there's all of these sort of appeasement steps. They talk up jobs in manufacturing in, U in the U.S., but when push comes to shove, it's more sort of design and assembly here and more, you know, the manufacturing prowess is in China. And China has such an advantage, right? We're competing with them on AI very, very closely, especially when it comes to humanoid robots and autonomous vehicles. And they have that manufacturing edge. We still have the technology edge. But if this is really moving to the physical side, then they may have the advantage in the next sort of battleground of this once in a generation, all important AI race. Does Elon build the robots here in the U.S.? Do we know? Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not yeah. sure. But I do know that, you know, yeah. you take a China's Unitree manufacturing in China, and they're actually commercially available right now, and they're being manufactured yeah. in China. All right. Thank you, Deirdre.